That's it. Okay. And should have popped up. Is it popped up yet? Oh yes, everything's popped yes. up. We're, on, we're live, folks. We're live. I'm just. Uh, this is um, now. What do I call? How how should I refer to you in the hangout? Uh, it doesn't matter. Should I call you Lil Miss? You call you Miss Harbour? Call me Haley. That's fine. Hey, okay, I'll call you Haley. Right then. Right. So I am here with Haley, and uh, let me just, just. Right. I'm here. So you know what I look like, folks. You know, be, right. So now I'm going to share the screen, and uh, when I talk, you'll see the screen, folks. And when Haley talks, you'll see her. So that's going to be the situation as we go through these questions to find out her type. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep it a little bit of a secret as to what type we both think she is. So as they go through, we'll see how things progress. All right. So I think that's it. And. I think you should be able to see it now. Yes. I could make it a little bit bigger. I don't know if you need any of this bigger. No, that that's should be all right. Oh, I'll just go oh, yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, right, so yeah, you can click on my square and it won't affect the... Uh, the final video so you can so the first question are you wanting me to read this out loud or uh, um... well it depends if you want to <laughs> I see the other okay yeah I, I think that might be better for the audience so yeah just because I'm not trying to be a cynic but I know lazy people don't want to read so I'll go ahead and yeah really follow your gut instinct and exciting physical impulses as they come up um, as they come up, absolutely not. This is not me at all. <laughs> um, I prefer to speculate and you know, sit and think about something. I really don't, I'm not very impulsive. I hope our connection is, is okay. Cause oh yeah, yeah, I, I can hear you. music going in the background. Okay, okay. It's perfect, pretty good. Now, I mean, uh, so yes, go, go, go ahead. I was, because I've read Dario's book, most of it, I, when I see these questions, I know what function he's sort of measuring. Gotcha. And I don't, I don't know if you want me to tell you or not, or maybe I'll tell you at the end when we go through. Yeah, so maybe, let, let's do that. Yeah, do it at the end. <laughs> so what, what do you reckon for that one then? Uh, not me. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. Well, okay, let's, okay, here's my question about number one. Freely follow your gut instincts and exciting physical impulses as they come up. I'm wondering, is this asking, am I an impulsive person as they come up, or am I more likely to follow my gut instinct? Like, what is this asking? I feel like a lot of these questions are ambiguous. Like, oh, right, it's really, yes. really ambiguous. Right. Okay. So I can sort of reinterpret this question for you because because I know yes. the function that is measuring with this. Um, I won't say what the name of the function is, but it's basically it's measuring your ability to uh, immerse yourself in the present context and adapt in the moment. So it's your ability. So it's a sort of a situational awareness and to adapt in the moment. How well and and by gut instinct, it doesn't. It doesn't mean like an FI thing. It just sort of means like an instinct of the right thing to do. Like say during sport, where you have uh, a sportsman or woman would have just, just the right instinct of what to do. That sort of thing, where they can quickly think and act in the moment. That's what okay. it's Okay, yeah, measuring. I misunderstood. Then, <laughs> I already kind of don't like this question ever. We're gonna do it anyway. Um, and that, in that aspect, I would have to completely do a flipperoo and say that's exactly me. Although I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself an impulsive person, but I believe I misunderstood. So, yeah. So, could you give us some examples of that? Let's see how many questions there are. That's it. That much. We've, we've, budgeted, we've budgeted two hours for this. Oh, we only got forty-eight questions. That's good. So we can like, go in depth. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Um. 
Well, for example, um, I mean, are, do you want an example as far as me not being impulsive or me following my gut instinct if something comes up? Well, maybe both, if you feel that both fit. <clears throat> well, um, I mean, I really don't know how to give an example of me not being impulsive other than just telling you, I mean, I, I know myself and I'm not an impulsive person at all. Um, as far as the other, following my gut instinct, uh, you said this wasn't asking, this wasn't uh, a question about uh, FI, so should, should I be no, addressing it, that? No, do, do you want me to tell you what function it is asking about? Sure. It's about extroverted sensor. So and okay, the way and then. the way that and, and that's how Dario conceives of extroverted sensing is so for instance uh, SP is a very good at acting in the moment and reacting David Kersley calls it like a tactical intelligence the ability to quink to I think it would be to like uh, think on their feet to quickly adapt to the situation keep it as it is then right not me okay Okay, excellent. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a little. Uh, is it something you would like to get better at, or well, I mean, of course, any person in the right mind would say I want to get better at something I suck at. <laughs> so, <laughs> in that aspect, yes, but with everything I'm doing and and the the specific things that like the goals I'm pursuing if it doesn't entail helping me in any way towards those goals I really don't care I mean I, I don't I don't mean to sound apathetic but uh, of course I think um, developing anything that you're not good at would would carry over well to the rest of your life so I guess ultimately yes I would but it would have to be something I would kind of force myself to work on and I wouldn't necessarily be happy to take time to do this. <laughs> That's a good answer because that, that gives the audience, the type knowledgeable audience, uh, that are the subscribers to this channel, it gives them a little bit of information about which other, other functions you value that come ahead of this without, without giving away any type details of you. Uh, now, look at this one. Number two, offer various unrelated ideas and see what potential they might suggest. I would say that is exactly me. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. oh, I really don't know. Uh, <laughs> one, thing we could ask, one thing we could ask about too is because we were talking about this earlier on is I mean, the audience will know that number two is asking about extroverted intuition. And, uh, and I think you've said when we chatted before that um, you, you tend to have a lot of these ideas and but not necessarily act on them. What, what is your attitude towards all of these ideas that pop into your head? Well, it's I like to consider, you know, all the possibilities, but, you know, I, I do recall what we were talking about earlier as far as having ideas pop into your mind but I mean you don't necessarily let that overwhelm you and you don't let that distract you from what like the specific question you're trying to answer the specific thing you're doing but at the same time I do feel it's important to you know an array of things I have to say that at if any point during this questionnaire if you feel like I'm misinterpreting something uh you know restate it restate it so, oh yeah yeah, I've been doing that subtly anyway. <laughs> but what I do is, it's, it's not that. It, what it is, it, it's not you. It's what it is, is because I've got the book and I, I, I can then say what the actual function Dario is measuring. And then we can talk about the function. And I've, I, I did this twice before and I was there with Hannah and we like took two and a half hours on it because we were like discussing what does this question mean? So it, it can be a bit. So it needs to be interpreted. Yes. So that, that's where the book helped. So maybe Dario deliberately wrote it like this so that you, you know, in order to understand this test by the book. Yeah. 
<laughs> of course. <laughs> Yes, what do so you am, am I in any way misinterpreting this? No. Which I feel no. like I am. I'm not. Okay. Well, it's I mean, spot, based on... It's just the, the, way, the way he worded the first question is gut instinct is something that... If you ask most people in the type community, they might go, Ooh, sounds a bit F.I. I mean, I think I would use that for... So that's a bit ambiguous. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, even though an hour isn't, like, just, we've only been video chatting an hour prior to this. Um, I realize that's not really enough time to feel someone out. Or maybe it is. I don't know. You tell me. But from what you know of me, like I said, if I'm misinterpreting this, um, you know, put, put me in the right direction. I, I'd appreciate that. Oh, yes, that. of course. Thank you. Okay. Uh, shall we move on, or? Oh, yes, number three. Okay. Determine success. Ooh, determine success by measurement or other objective methods such as the time taken. No. Ooh. Absolutely not. Uh, in my opinion, for example, if I'm looking at a goal that I'm working towards, it really doesn't matter how much time I put into it. At the end of the day, if I don't have it done exactly like I want, then it's not. I'm not successful it, it didn't meet up to my standards it doesn't matter if I took five minutes or you know five months um this uh, because because I've because I'm near the end of the chapter this is asking about extroverted thinker uh, and so so this is like and the way Dario defines this is he thinks the extroverted thinker is like as the person is working along it's like they want to have something like yardsticks and goalposts that they can sort of like look at to see how well they're going. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Yes, absolutely. Like you're saying uh, you want to be able to set, like if I have a, a huge goal I'm working on, then I will say, well, this day I need to do this, the next day I need to do yeah. this, and I make sure I reach those mini goals. Is that well, more along the lines of? Yeah, or it might be you have a, like a big plan and you'd like break it down into sections and it's like i'm going to do this bit in this period so like so knowing how to break it down into workable steps extroverted thinker yeah and and also okay. using that by seeing things like okay how am i progressing towards the plan am i on schedule for achieving this goal that sort of thing so that's the that's the mindset of extroverted thinker of always trying to get some kind of objective measure that kind of thing. Yep. So, what, what do you gotcha. think? So, so, what do you want? Mostly me? Exactly then me? I would say, yeah, it's probably exactly me. Right. So, would you like to give the audience some examples of that in some things you're working on? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, like, there's one specific instance for the last few days. Um, I've been going over an article that Brad Schoenfeld wrote on metabolic stress, and he breaks it down uh, as far as the different metabolites that accumulate. And just going through those metabolite by metabolite, it like the complexity of each one in and in and of itself. It, it's just, I mean, it can take just one can take me that whole night. So I kind of break it down. Like I have to break it down. I'll say, okay, let me focus on these two tonight. Make sure I get those out of the way, and then the next day I'll do these two or you know such and such. So it, it makes me feel more organized, and it kind of gives me, like, if I don't reach a certain, like, if I don't oh, no. finish the topic, then I kind of feel, I, I don't know. Right. Like I'm, right. So, so you, you sort of work into an internal schedule. Yeah. Right, I'm just going to, right. Just minimizing things, just getting things leaner and meaner in terms of the uh, the computer where I am at, at my end. There we go. Right, so yeah, um, I, I did intermediary metabolism as part of my degree. And yes, very complicated and involved in huge things. But that was mainly like the Krebs TCA cycle and oxidative phosphorylation and like 
metabolism of poisons. So it was that was quite complicated. Yes. So um, right, determine what says part of the method. Right. Um, do you have like those things planned out in terms of where you want to be at a certain date? Yeah. Do you want to tell us about any of that? Well, I'll give you an instance or an example that I feel a little bit frustrated on. It's actually just the question I posted about. Um, I feel like it's it's something I might not have any control over because it's either something that can't be answered because you know lots of it is just theory at this point, and I, I feel like attaining this information will put me so much further ahead and. Like it'll, what'll happen with me is I will say I want to cover this information by such and such a date. Um, of course, obviously, I'm not going to be able to cover all the information within that certain category, but I, I feel like I need to, you know, span out and you know look at the information in this article. But what I'm getting frustrated at is that this particular information uh, regarding metabolic stress and that question I posted on my YouTube. It's like no one else is answering that question or, you know, looking at it and I just feel like it's a major setback. But that's kind of like a question that I feel I should have already tackled. Like I should already completely understand it and just with lack of information, I'm unable to. I'll ask, I'll ask, uh, I'll ask Wojtek as well because he said he, he said he studied it. He's got a degree in physics, Wojtek, so he's a clever old so-and-so. So I'll. Uh, is he the gentleman that wrote the article that, that you posted under my in the comments? Oh no no no! Wojtek's just this dude that I talked to in Germany, but he's a clever dude. Oh. Okay. He's an INTP. So um, but I was talking to him about it, and he said he looked into it in detail. So it's it's just what we were talking before about um, uh, just working out that kind of stuff. Um. Right, so yeah, I'll put you under exactly me for that. So, and also, and in general, uh, what information is important to you? Whenever you're talking <laughs> for any idea. kind of information, what 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 is good information for you? Uh, you mean as far as it being credible? No, no. I mean, uh, um. Uh, even if it's credible, let's just say all the information is credible. Which information are you going to choose? Why do you choose certain pieces of information over another? Or in other words, why do you choose certain areas of knowledge over other areas of knowledge? What are sort of your criteria for deciding what is important and is not important in terms of things to know? Well, um, I can go in a few different directions with this. Uh, as far as me and my goals, if it's pertinent information, I kind of compile it and put it in my research book. I'm not sure if that's what you mean. Um, yeah, I've had to be, I've had to sort of like be a bit vague so as not to prejudice your answer. Because we sort of mentioned this before about how information is selected. So I didn't want to prejudice your answer, you see. So yeah. So for instance, there's, there are certain types that will just collect information because they find it interesting, because they find it fascinating. Whereas there are other I types. I will not that just sit. Yeah, I, I won't just seek out information just to do it. Like, mm. in other words, if if. Uh, Someone sends me, or, I mean, it could be anything. I could just run across a book that is maybe has the best information about cooking. I don't know. Um, what's that field? A any field of science. Or it could be anything. It could be ballet. It could be yeah. the most informative, up to date, you know, credible. But if I don't care, <laughs> I. Yeah, it has to pertain to what I want to do and, and you know, the current goals that I'm, I'm after. Right. So the audience, keep that in mind. Whereas there's, so 
as we know, there are certain types that seek information which is useful and other types that seek information just because they find it interesting and fascinating and they like to think about it. So it, it's, it seems that, as you said there, you seek information that is useful to your goals. Right. And I'm saying that more for the audience because I'm sort of, sort of like guiding them through it to like work out your type as we go through these questions. Uh, because yeah, these questions. Right, that's an interesting one. Number four. Well, be it was fine to be responsible for judge. and take care of others' feelings. I didn't score okay. highly on this either. <laughs> <laughs> Probably little, little me. That's pretty good. I think that's probably what I put. But I am on record as doing this, so you could you could have a look at what I put. With, uh... <laughs> okay, uh, I'm assuming we're going to move on. Okay, number five: experience yeah. of premonition or foresee the distant future. Okay, something else I have to state before I, I get into some of these questions. Um, besides the fact that I think a lot of them are ridiculously ambiguous, I do think that having someone, and I'm sure this will influence results uh, in a negative way, but like a question such as this, experience a premonition or foresee the distant future, I mean, who's going to want to say no? I mean, <laughs> I feel like ego drives this question more than anything else. So yeah. just that alone, I feel like people, oh, yeah, you know, that's me. So, you, you know, what yeah, I, yes, I, I would, you know, what I did with this, go ahead. whenever I saw these kind of questions, they, they sounded so weird to me that I just put not me. And then when I got my results, it said unused for that function. But then when I did the book, because they're worded a lot better in the book, um, I got a higher score on this particular function. But yeah, I mean, we can ask you right now, what function do you think that is trying to get out, number five? I and I. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... I mean, I mean, that's, uh, I mean, that's sort of aimed at INFJs. <laughs> Whereas, uh, yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say, I was gonna say the same thing. Yes, yeah, so, like reading this for the first time, experience a premonition or foresee the distant future. That to me, I mean, I can just see an INFJ like, oh, my psyche abilities. I, I'm not trying to, you know, be hard on INFJs because I, I find one very, very, yeah, he's very sweet and whatnot, but. Yeah, you, you understand. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I understand what this is asking, and I have to say it is, it is exactly me. All right. Oh, so what sort of things do you uh, have a premonition of? Um, well, for example, uh, like one of the things I'm doing, I'm, I'm getting ready to launch a website, and just with... The different things I'm implementing with the website, I, and it sounds crazy to say to someone, but I, I just, of course, I don't want to fail. I don't want this website to fail, so I'm sitting here thinking of all the ways this could go, and I'm thinking that if I implement this into my website, this is how someone's going to approach it and react to it, but this would be better because if they see this in front of their face, it will, you know, like, I feel like I'm weighing, and not necessarily weighing, I'm like looking at all the ways that someone could approach this and I just feel like I know the best way it'll work and how it's basically going to end up. Oh. And like, it sounds crazy to say that to someone because of course they're like, oh right, you know, like you really know. Do you know what Voitech does? Which I mean, Voitech's no, I'm sorry? Voitech's a website designer. You could help. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not in the design. It's it's yeah. me thinking about how people are going yes. to react to it and what would be the best way, yeah. like from a business standpoint, what's what's going to be the best way to, to generate revenue. Do you want to say what the <laughs> website will be about? Um, well, <laughs> it's a subscription website that gives viewers paying viewers access to a photo database. Uh, they can access the website for the information for free. 
the world for other information for free as far as uh, like nutrition and, and blog posts on hypertrophy and, and stuff like that, that's free. But the subscription aspect of it that they'd have to pay for is access to a photo database, basically. So, and I'm trying to set it up in a manner that makes it easy because I realize people are lazy. I'm not trying to be cynical. I realize people are lazy when they click on a website. You know, I don't want them to have to go through so many things in order to get to the, hey, subscribe to this site and, you know, here's all the wonderful photos you can see. I want to make it easy to where when they click on it, they don't have to go through so much work and they get frustrated and just realize it's not worth their time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Right. Um, so, number six. Notice uh, one of the details in front of you match what you're accustomed to. Well, I don't know. This is kind of ambiguous. Right, well, well, is this like the, the test, the, the general test that is recommended for people? No, no, no. This is just Dario's test, like his the technician oh. test. But if you know how to interpret it, what it does is at the end, the benefit of this test is it gives you strengths of like how strong you are on each function. But you you you, have, you do have to sort of, the person taking the test has to sort of interpret it. And it is good. It, it One way in that it's good is that it gets you to think about the question and therefore gets you to think about the function and therefore gets you to think about yourself. So, um, so number six. Okay, so what this is asking about is SI. It's asking about how much your mindset is set towards being by the book or not. And Wait, yes, how much your mindset is what? By the book. Because okay. the, the SJ is, so the SJ is the SI types. They like to, they like things to be similar to what they're used to. They find that comforting because they are very good at memorizing things and following set procedures. So they like everything to sort of follow procedure because they, they know how to do that very efficiently and very well. So this is sort of judging how much of that kind of mindset you have. Well, I think uh, Dario probably could have worded this a little bit differently and not, not by choosing many well, not by you know considerably changing the phrase, but what I would have done is instead of saying notice whether the details in front of you match what you're accustomed to, say something along the lines of prefer that the details in front of you match what you're accustomed to. Because in my opinion, yeah, sure, I can notice if they're if they match what I'm accustomed to, but whether or not I prefer it or not is a completely different matter. You see, I, I think I think that we might have worded that. That's okay though. That's okay because, and I think he's put that deliberately. Notice because it's introverted sensing as a perceiving function. So yeah, we'll, we'll go with it literally. So you notice. So you do notice when details in front of you match what you're accustomed to. Now, what details? Though I mean, this is so ambiguous. Like um, uh, phys physically in my environment. Uh, it, it, maybe it's because you're young. It, it's like just noticing changes in things. Oh, this used to be like that. That used to be like this. Um, well, as far as like in my environment, not not so much like physically. But for example, like if I'm reading something about hypertrophy, uh, well, I think I'm misinterpreting this. I'm, I'm mis. Okay, this is this is basically what it My means. My first answer to this would probably be little me. Okay. So well, I just go with my genuine answer. Right, but I'll will tell you what what the kind of person they're trying to measure with this question. They're trying to measure the person who's an SJ, and is and they want things to be the way they used to be. So if you think of an SJ who's uh, like sixty, they're always looking at something like, oh, I want they want this to be like this. It's what they're accustomed to. They feel um, a, a level of comfort with things which are familiar to them, and they don't like change. And quite a few people have a tendency to feel that. Like SPs, they like it when things are in flux, 
because it's like, oh, this is exciting, I can adapt. But there's other people where changing the situation is stressful to them and they like things to be organized and uh, following procedure, things like that. So it's, it's getting at that kind of mentality. So yes. Okay. So what about number seven? Begun by definition. I'm sorry? So yeah, I agree. The questions could be worded better. Sorry, Dario. <laughs> but. <laughs> Okay, uh, number seven, be guided by definition, logical deduction, or other nugget of reasoning. Mostly or exactly me. Um, probably exactly me. <laughs> right. Now, that, do you know what? And this is in relation to, uh, like, as far as uh, thinking. Yeah, I mean, you did that. You've done that in some of your comments, where you, in fact, you actually used this function when you picked up something in Dario's reasoning about uh, where you were talking about, uh, you know, about developed self and uh, people being born with traits. You know, where you were able to like pass out his language and uh, find a little inconsistency. So yes, I think this is measuring TI. This here. Do you, okay. do you think that's TI? Do you think INTP is probably good at this thing? I see. I don't know enough about it. Okay. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I do because I don't. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> right, okay, here we go. And then, uh, how about this one, number eight? Oh, yeah. Exactly me. Ooh. Yeah. That fun now, this is measuring FI. That's measuring an introverted feeling. Uh, okay, number nine, compassionately take on someone else's needs as your own. As a general rule, no, I don't. Um, only if I'm really, really close to that person, but everyone else, like, I'm, I'm not trying to sound indifferent, but I, I don't really care. Well, that's, a very con that's an answer very consistent to the type that we both think you are. So there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Because you've got this. this. This is, to me, this is more, this is very important, this one. Feels something is good or bad. Uh, because it means that those people that you are close to, that you treat them well. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, okay. so, 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 number nine, which, so number nine is measuring extroverted feeling. Right. Okay. What about, what about number 10? Okay, now I'm going to put a little line between this, in this question to divide it. It says, construct an argument to convince someone, bar, using evidence clearly in front of you both. I think I can misinterpret this. Uh, my first answer choice would probably be exactly me, because I'm thinking I'm constructing an argument to convince someone using evidence. How the clearly in front of you both impacts it, I don't know. Hmm. Okay, what I'll do is I'll read out a section from Dario's book that I think is a fantastic section. Uh, and uh, let's see how well you relate to this. Uh, okay. it's, it's a section about Dario where he's giving examples about how to improve TA. And he says, uh, examine arguments in depth. When dealing with arguments, first remove value judgments, spin and bias, and then line them up against facts and common criteria. For example, adjectives are red lights indicating value statements. Spin refers to selective emphasis on some facts or consequences while ignoring others. Opinions are statements that are unsupported by evidence. Examine if stated likelihood, likelihoods match real examples. Beware arguments that appeal to values. Are there underlying assumptions such as everyone should get along or one should trust experts? Compare underlying assumptions to the evidence at hand. If something is unclear, ask for facts, metrics, and criteria used. 
results obtained and similar known cases and assess whether facts were gathered in a documented way or by a neutral party. A thorough examination of facts and consequences often reveals empty arguments. So I'm wondering if like the mindset of what I've just read that out there fits you or not. Seems pretty accurate. Yeah. Now what's that, what I find amusing is that you are using this to then say to Dario, I'd like to see your information on things that you claim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's the first thing that I, I thought of. I, I opened the website and I'm like, yeah, this information is wonderful, but, you know, is it credible? And how can I go about finding if it's credible? Yeah, and, then, and I'll just tell the audience that that's biotypes.net and that's uh, Dario, uh, Dario created the website for his mother. Uh, Laura Power, who is an endocrinologist, and I suppose the only real way to do it is to like, well, look up each hormone on Wikipedia, then like look at the references, and I suppose an individual study of the hormones would, because uh, you know there's bound to be research. And, and I have a book that I can send you some scans of called Physique and Character by Ernst Kretschmer. And he looked at the influence of hormones on someone's temperament. And the, the, uh, they didn't know, they knew, oh, we can talk about this later, but um, hormone, you know, it just sort of like, this sort of like matches the idea that hormones do affect someone's temperament. And so we were asking about artisans so SPs, when they are, as we talked about extroverted sensing, it's like being in the moment and adapting and uh, uh, instinctively reacting to the moment. And when, you're, when you see SPs in this mode of, of reacting to the environment, you can see that they are really jazzed by it. They are really enjoying being in the moment, responding. And so when they do tests on these, people in that instance they can, they can say that is a dopamine release they're in the moment in a highly they're in other people would see them as wow they're in a highly stressful situation it's like when you see sport where you see everybody else can see wow don't they feel the pressure but they're absolutely loving the pressure because they've got this dopamine release and from an eeg point of view dario would say when these people are in the zone, it's like they're going to a special whole brain state where they're like completely focused on the thing that they're looking at. And so what you can get with SPs is when they're not, when they're not stimulated by something from the outside, they can, they can tend to get very bored because they want to be in that state where they're stimulated from the outside and have maximum focus and in that dopamine state. That is why they're so good as like in sport and as fighter pilots, things like that. And, as, and even as surgeons, ESDPs make very good surgeons. Because yeah, they're gonna be very good under pressure. Man, that's, yeah. that's really interesting. That's crazy. Uh, one thing you stated as far as if they're not, if they're not focused on something physically or, uh, you know, I, I don't know the word that I want to use, but I guess if they're not if they're not focused on something physically, they get bored. That almost oh, yeah. seems to be the absolute opposite of the way I am. Uh, that's that's yes. crazy. That's really interesting. Uh, a friend of mine, he I didn't read the book, but he referred the book to me. It was called uh, "Hour Between Dog and Wolf," and I read the synopsis. It was discussing how uh, it has been shown that testosterone levels and levels have often been what's been interpreted this specific studies on these people or how they measured the serum testosterone levels or anything like that but uh they noticed that when people got ballsy as far as uh like in in the uh like stock markets and and you know making a, a big yeah. move it was generally associated with someone who has a high or higher level of, of test so i thought that was really interesting and it was discussing how like higher test levels tend to drive the market. So, um, you see, the thing is, I know that's debatable. <laughs> it's the, the the problem with that though is that um, 
and this is something we can talk about in future because I've been doing videos with R Dub. That's the nickname I have for her. Um, because I don't. So uh, is uh, and she actually said all the people call her R Dub because I because I know three Rachels. So I've got to have three different names. Um. Uh. Right. Uh. Anyhow, so thing is with the stock market is a lot of that has to do with monetary policy, and what happens is when interest rates are low. It, it means that um, it interferes with the perception of time because uh, there, is the, uh, the, there is the time preference theory of interest. And so what it does, we'll talk about this in future, but it messes up with the perception of time and people get over ambitious with things in the future. And one of the reasons, the main reason the stock market goes up is you get your put from the Fed. So again, it, it, it is related there. And I see what you mean, because I've sort of, you see this with bulls. Uh, whereas I'm a bit of a bear, but I'm bullish on gold. So we, we can talk about this in the future, but it's, it's a complicated issue to do with monetary policy. But I do, not, I do know what you mean in terms of um, what uh, John Maynard Keynes would call it, um, the animal spirits of fear and greed. It's just that when you have low interest rates, it creates an environment that makes people greedy. Because it's like when you have low interest rates, it makes people reckless. It makes people take loads of money out on their credit cards because they think, oh, it's only a low interest rate. Whereas if interest rates were set by a free market, so actually set by the actual supply of real savings, people wouldn't take the money out on the credit card because they go, oh, that's a bit steep. I don't want to pay 15%. So right, people are just. Right. So interest rates are incredibly important in terms of people's of how people perceive time, and I did I've done a slide that I can send you later on about how interest rates affect the perception of time, because introverted. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I I definitely you know think that is a a big factor. Uh, if we were to say okay, you know the interest rate is low at, at such and such point of time, if we took two individuals, one with a and this is just looking at the speculations of this book. Like I said, yeah. I never read it, but if, if we had two individuals on with a higher serum testosterone level, maybe that individual would be more uh, apt to take out a larger sum of money. In other words, it was saying he's more more ballsy. Yeah. So, But yeah, I definitely agree with you. Yeah, I'm well, not saying it's just this one factor. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I would never say that. I, I never say what? That is just like the, the markets are driven by just, you know, this one hormone that would be absolutely oh, yeah. asinine. Yes. Good word. I like the word asinine. Uh, <laughs> another, another good word is inane. Uh, in fact, that, by um, Avon, he once used the character, once used the phrase gutless inanity. And then Villa says, what does that mean? <laughs> right. Um, but so uh, people, anyhow. Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, I'll talk a little bit about the time credit. We've still got those two hours, haven't we? I'll, I'll just spend a little bit talking about the, the, the uh, time preference theory of interest. So they used to think that lending money was usury or usury. I can't, don't know what the actual pronunciation is. And but the, the justification for the interest is, well, if you have to save up for a car, and it takes you, and it would take you five years to save up for the car. Whilst you're saving it, over those five years, you don't get the use of the car. You have to wait five years. But if you borrow the money, you get to use the car now. So the cost of the interest is equivalent to the time preference. So yes, it costs you more money to borrow it, but you get to use the item now. So that is like the time preference theory of interest. And for ages, people could not justify interest rates until one bright spot came along. I think it was Carl Mengo and said, no, you get to have stuff earlier. There's loads of people with common sense out there who could have told these philosophers, oh, by the way, you want it now. But it, so, so then you get this thing where now if we take it, if we make it more complex in terms of business logic, 
people will take out a business loan and they are they will be thinking this when am i going to get the money in order to pay the bank back so and the interest rate if the interest rate is high then they're going to think hang on a minute i don't think i can go with plan a because it will take too long for the money to come in in order for me to pay the bank now if interest rates are low then that makes people invest in things that are more speculative and more long term and so you tend to get these long term investments that in hindsight look crazy like like when they had the dot com bubble in the late 90s like and you had these weird and you've actually got it now you've got weird companies with these sky high valuations that don't have any profits and you get these weird because people get speculative because because it's like oh i can pay it back it's a low interest rate so i can inf so because the further you go into the future the most you know what i mean it, it's riskier it's you get riskier investments so it may so it messes around with people's intuition of time the fact that the interest rate do you think that's fair enough yeah yeah you, if you put an intj with low interest rates their imaginations might go into the clouds so if you put an intj with a or any other type uh, any other type with, with that thinks a lot about the future if you, have, you give them a reasonable interest rate environment that will give them a dose of reality uh, so, no i'm not going to go with that that won't i won't be able to pay that loan off so it can make so that's the basic thing people's imaginations running away with them because of the greed the potential of this could and that's what that's what can happen so yeah so it's, it's there we go it, I, but that's not my, my main thing, interest rates. So I try not to talk about it too much. Because it's a little <laughs> bit abstract for people. But I, I, I am like really like hardcore on this, because let me show you something. I'm like, on interest rates, I'm like, colours to the mass, dollar collapse. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> London Mises, Peter Shear. Like, we are there, we, we are pretty sure. That, that's how you know that's been there i have only seen that like i haven't seen that until right now i didn't even <laughs> notice that was there <laughs> it's pretty it's, okay. it's like the confidence it's like peter should this guy and uh, let me tell you dario likes peter Schiff. yeah just saying so the dario fans out there he endorses peter Schiff. right let's go back oh oh fixed on the wrong thing right uh green the green square so how much time do we have left um Hayley? Uh, well i don't particularly have a time that i have to marvelous have i feel flattered time. i feel flattered but we've only done nine questions but <laughs> so but we are analyzing so we will so the audience will know what functions being asked about when we do this so uh so yeah number 10 is i'll tell you what i'll do i'll read through the book so, so that people can get a good understanding of what's going on here. Okay. Uh, so, da, 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 da. right. So, some other. So, this is Dario on extroverted thinking. Uh, as you develop extroverted thinking, you will be more efficient with time and resources. Uh, improve your ability to solve life's many problems in a practical, logical manner. Stay objective when implementing difficult decisions. Convince others with easy to follow reasoning. Uh, right, then he's got uh, some questions in the book, such as uh, so the, the, the simple methods for TE are like, so for basic use, you've got usually know the time and what point you are in a process, uh, determine success by measurement or other objective method, such as time taken. Follow a straight line of reasoning. And then you've got intermediate use is stick to making decisions based on impersonal measures such as points and a intensive plan to maximize progress towards goals. And then for advanced use of TE, mobilize resources and supervise implementation of a multi-part plan. Construct an argument to convince someone using evidence clearly in front of you both. You can see it straight off the question. Uh, lay out steps for others to complete tasks in time and resource efficient ways. 
so what's what victor calls this kind of thing and he's he, he actually like cuts to the chase and calls it business logic because it's like all this thinking is so useful to business so oh and that's another example of and dario has in the book the difference between preference and skill so you could have somebody who doesn't value te but because they're in business they're used to this kind of thinking and so they get better at this function even though they don't value it it's just that it's just that tj types naturally have an inclination towards this kind of thinking right uh right, and there's some other quotes for you uh I mean, based on what you read, I would answer, to, my answer to number 10 would be exactly me. Okay. Cut into the chase. Right. No need to read anymore. Because it would be take ages. Because I remember just doing one chapter. I did three videos on NI, like two hours each, just one chapter. Crazy bad. <laughs> right. So number 11. Achieve a metamorphosis, definitive insight, a powerful vision of change. Okay, um, I'm going to assume this is geared at NI. Is that yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Again, I, I read it and thought INFJ. Um, yeah, just a bit. <laughs> yeah, I would, again, I would say probably exactly me. Ooh. I mean, these two questions alone, number 10 and number 11, should give the audience a bit of a clue as to what type you are. Uh, so, number 12. Comparing experience against the storehouse of familiar experiences to find what's reliable. This is ambiguous again. Um, I feel like I'm constantly pitting ideas, like things are constantly popping up in my mind and I'm comparing like will this work compared to this but at the same time you know I remember that we talked about uh, not letting those things and how I don't let those things distract me from that one point I'm trying to make or that one thing I'm trying to do so yeah. I'm not sure if that's what this is getting at um what this is this is about um this in other words this is measuring how SJ you are it's just it's a measure of introverted sensor because this is what uh because sj is they like to stick to what's reliable so it's like it, it then the mantra of sj's could be if it ain't broke don't fix it they, they, <laughs> they always want a predictable standard uh that is uh all first but but it does, does this doesn't mean that they're robotic though so, for instance, my mother, who's an ISTJ, will have four or five different gardening methods for the same thing. So and she can switch in between them. But all of those methods are from experts, from people she respects. So it's a case of switching between learned methods. No. SJ is really See, I, I see the logic in that. I mean, okay, you're saying that she's implementing these different methods just because she finds them all credible i mean it, no 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 she chooses what one I that fits her particular circumstances you know but you said she implements them all no no no, no. what she does she is that she has a, but so she, she says she's doing a particular procedure in gardening and she'll know like four or five different ways of doing it because she like follows four or five different experts but she will then choose the one that she sees as appropriate to her situation. So, but, but she's not improvising, but she is choosing amongst sort of like authorized methods from experts. Because always with okay. SJs, they want to go to a tried and trusted method. Whereas artisans, SPs, they like to improvise. Based on, gotcha. what they see, okay. yeah. based on what they see clearly in front of them. So what you can have is, in an emergency situation, in a chaotic situation, that is where SPs are at their best. Because it's where the rules break down. Whereas SJs are best in a routine environment, like just getting the procedures done. And whereas artisans, you put them in those kind of jobs, they hate it. The routine, 
all that kind of stuff. And Jeff can tell you more about that because unfortunately he is in that position. <laughs> okay, you know? well, with everything you just stated, as far as answering this question is concerned, um, I guess if I could give an example of this. Uh, in glute training particularly, I have gone out of my way to seek out the one method that I think is, is best. Of course, I think there are more than one lift that I think should be implemented, but you know, I definitely think there is a set way that should be uh, utilized. So, uh, like for example, you gave uh, the example of your mother and her gardening, yeah. and that she just uses that one thing, that one method that she thinks works. Well, she can choose other ones, but it's like it's like, so. Yeah, it might be the same with exercise, where you might have four or five. Di so, for instance, you might follow. You probably might. You've probably heard from like many experts about how best to say, as you said, work on your glutes. And then you might think, okay, I'll choose this one that's best for me amongst these options. It's just that the SJs are more likely to put authority in the, in the words of experts because they naturally defer to experts because their thought process is, well, they're an expert, they're successful, they must know what they're doing. Okay, that, yeah, that is exactly me. Now, so. the thing is, though, is that sometimes SI can be confused with TE. So it's a little bit tricky because they both have to do with like being procedural. But I suppose with the TE mindset, it's more, okay, bottom line, does it work? I don't care whether I'm supposed to do it or not. Does it work? Whereas the SI mindset is more towards, oh, this is the by the book method. This is the accepted method. So usually there's an overlap. Yeah, so what do you do? So does it work? If it works, I use it. If it doesn't work, I don't give I don't give right. crap. Exactly. Now also SJs also do that because you know they ain't stupid and because half of the SJs are TJs, the STJ and ISTJ. So their mindset is use use the accepted method until it doesn't work and then switch to another no, accepted method. That's ridiculous. <laughs> In my opinion, that's ridiculous. <laughs> if you if you tell me more about that, that can help the audience with values of function. Uh, for example, um, people all over the internet. You, want, I, I'm sorry to cuss. Uh, well, I'll, I'll use a nice word for it. You want a nice butt? What do you do? You squat, right? <laughs> well, that's what you'll find all over the internet, and that is the popular method. And I can't even tell you how many times I see women implementing this into their routine. Well, this is the article I read. It said to squat or so-and-so has squatted for so long. And I mean, that's not what the research supports. And so I, I just, I can't mindlessly follow a popular, you know, what what's popular just because. Mm. So. Yeah, so what you said there, that is the SJ mentality of this is what everyone says. They've done it. So basically, I, I would, from, from, from my point of view, I would see squats as more as something that would be something that wouldn't necessarily increase muscle mass because it's more. Well, not, not in the glutes anyway. Yeah. Quads, yes. Glutes, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Yes, quads, yes. And quads is not necessarily something a woman wants to increase. Well, I would have to disagree with it. Well, I said necessarily. I mean, some do. Some I know, do. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily. It all depends. Right then. Uh, However, I do implement uh, one specific squat variation just for my quads. Right. Do you, you don't want to show us on camera that, do you? Because then that would be a good thumbnail. <laughs> but oh, that was just a trick question. <laughs> it, uh -huh, yes. Right, so number 12. Uh, oh, oh, yes, with that. Uh, so, do you think you did that a little bit or, or not? Well, based on everything I've said to you, um, what, what would you, well, what do you think my answer is for me misinterpreting this? 
Well, what I do you think my answer should be based on everything I said? I would think somewhat me. Okay. Uh, because it's your experiences. Comparing it to, it's not other people's experiences, it's your own experiences. I and understand. You are, pardon? Yeah, let's, let's do that. I think that would be the yeah. best. Yeah. So I think it's somewhat me because that's also like a TE mindset as well. Pay this work, let's go with it. So there's a little bit of an overlap sometimes between SI and TE. It's just that TE, TE, is, is, TE is more objective with SI than, than SI. Uh, I think one thing you said was at the end of the day, implement it if it works. Yeah. Is that kind of one of the bigger differences? Because that's how I feel like I go about things. If it works, you implement it. You don't just you know mindlessly... Yeah, I mean, the S S J will will try something if it's approved, and if it doesn't work, they'll switch to something else. But they'll also, but I think an S J would go to another expert to uh, oh, this expert's not right. I'll, they'll go to another because because they're always the 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 the, the it, they always want to seek out an authority on a subject. Somebody who is an authority, someone they respect, and apparently with the STJs, they only listen to somebody if they respect them. Okay. So, uh, so it, it, shall we move on? I think we shall. Sorry, which what, sorry which one are you on? Sorry. I know. I was saying, shall we move on? Yes. Oh, shall we move on? All oh, right. Okay. Yes. We're on number 13. Yeah, that would probably be best. Okay. Number 13. Remain in touch with what you want for yourself. What motivates you? Yes. Exactly me. Right. I think, what function do you think that's asking about? Uh, probably FI. Yep. See, you're already in the swing of things in terms of knowing which functions are being asked. Uh, yeah. 14. 14. Apply leverage to a situation to solve a problem and personally using minimal effort. Right, I think I might need to explain this one because it's very... Yes. Um, what, it, what it basically means is because I've look, got the book, folks, is and he actually calls his TI chapter gaining leverage using a framework. So basically what it means, I'll just have a little explanation there for people. Um, so for instance, if you're trying to understand someone and you're using typology to understand them, then that typology is a framework. It's basically it's using a theory to gain some kind of advantage. And INTPs do that a lot. They use a lot of theories. Now, what I find quite amusing is that Dario's TE mindset still comes across in using a theory for a useful purpose. So he even words things in a TE kind of way. Although he would probably say that's the nature of the book, Ben, because it's like a self-help book that can teach people skills. So it's like how to use TI usefully. So basically how to use a theory, how to implement a theory uh, to, to an advantage. So you gain leverage using the framework and the framework is a theoretical model. Make sense? Makes better sense than what the question asked. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, an example I would have to give this, or give to this, rather. When I, okay, so the hypertrophy indicators, the hypertrophic indicators, all that mumbo jumbo is at the end of the day just theories. Uh, so it's basically up to me or up to us to try to read them and apply these theories basically to see growth and i've done well i've tried to do as good of a job as i can um can you put that question screen back oh yeah oh yeah yep yeah. uh, okay sorry about that right so i was okay. thinking uh, 
Now, in terms of uh, female bodybuilders or women in good shape, have you ever heard of Sylvia Scaglioni? I probably know her, but I'm, I'm really yeah. bad with names. Yeah, she have, yes. Yeah, Sylvia Scaglioni. Anyhow, right. Uh, so, number 14. Okay, so what, what about her? Oh, yeah, she was, she, she was a, a fitness model. I think she still is. It's just the name came to mind when you're thinking about that. Okay, gotcha. Because she's not too big, but she looks she looks great, Sylvia Scaglioni. I was just wondering what you thought of her. See, I, I, I'd have to see a photo of her. Right, okay. Number 14, um, oh, I'd uh, say mostly. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay, 15 now. Probably not me at all. The so audience yeah, that, can read this, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, they can see that, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, there you're describing SP. So which types do you think would be good at 15? I'm assuming there's an S somewhere in there. I, I don't know. Yeah. Do you think ESTPs would be good at that? Probably. Yep. All right, so uh, number 16. Patterns. Well, I, suppose, I don't know. This is kind of ambiguous. Yeah, I, I suppose the key part of this is enjoy playing with. Yeah, that's what I was gonna. I was gonna yeah. put a bar in between that and random interconnect. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like just for its own sake. Enjoy playing with. No. No. Oh, say not, not me. Not me for that. Okay, so number sixteen is not me. Uh, number seventeen. No, not me. Yeah. Do you know what function that's measuring? Number seventeen. Uh, I don't know. It, it's measure. It's a uh, SI, so it's measuring S Janus. Okay. So you you can see how the SJs would uh, tick highly on this. Especially ESFJ. ESFJ would click exactly me. <laughs> uh, Do you have a comprehensive plan to maximize progress from multiple no, 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 multiple goals at once? No. That's, is that what this question is stressing? Multiple goals at once? Yeah, um, I think it's better put the way... I think what Dario means is sort of what he said in the chapter, where it was like... Um, a multi-part plan and I don't think I don't think it literally means goals right at the same time um let me think uh, uh, okay so let me think about in the case of you designing your website. There are more, are there more than one threads though? Where it's like, oh, I've got to work on this bit and I've got to work on this bit and this bit and this bit, where there are various strands, but it's not just one thing that you're working on. Yes. So that's what, that's what he might mean. Okay, so yeah, then exactly me. We've got number 19. 19, exactly me. Alright. <laughs> Again, I think I'm concisely referenced multiple frameworks at once. While problem solving. Can you rephrase this for me? Okay, this is like this is this is basically basically the, the 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 type that would score highest on this would be INTP, and so it's like if if I'm trying to guess someone's type, I'll be like, well, I'll use Kersey, I'll use Enneagram, I'll use Oceanics, I'll use all these different angles, all these different models or frameworks to try to solve the problem, and. 
so it, 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 it's basically as an INTP thing of like learning lots of theories pretty much for their own sake and because they're interesting it's like theory upon theory upon theory of similar things and looking at the connections between the theories that's why we do it but we, 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 I suppose we waste time doing too much theory so but the advantage of, of INTP is using multiple frameworks at once. Of course, other types, even though they don't value uh, this function, might still use it. So it's a question of how many different theories do you use when trying to solve a problem? As many as I consider relevant. I mean, if it helps, if it gives my argument leverage, then I will utilize every single thing that I can. Right. So do you think do you think you're somewhat, mostly, or exactly? I'd say exactly. All right. All right. Number 21. A mystical state or sudden release of emotions. Goodness me. Absolutely not. <laughs> follow steps to ensure tasks. Excuse me. Follow steps to ensure tasks are predictable and completed correctly. Yeah, exactly me. Alright. 23, engage life's magical moments and meaningful coincidences as I have. Uh, I say little, little me. Yeah, I think what that's measuring is extroverted intuition, especially in like ENTPs and ENFPs. And also some SPs as well, for 23, I suppose. Quickly, we have to take advantage of the media. No, this is not me. Right, again, that's very much, this is what Donald Trump does as an ESTP. This is very much an SP thing, this. <laughs> okay, 25 hours and make sure what you want for yourself or others. Okay, they included or others. The first part, yeah, definitely. I always make sure to what I want for myself. Um, I'm just going to admit, omit the or others, or is that a part of the question I should be particularly yeah, okay. focused on? Okay, so I would say, yeah, exactly me. All right. Analyzing Kachiko doesn't fit with a well-defined principle. Yeah, explain. Well, um, you are able to pick up. So, for instance, uh, when I first saw this in you is when you when you picked up something that Dario said when you were trying to understand when he thought type sort of was settled in someone when you when he talked about like the core self and the developed self and you were able to like um, critique his language and also during this test you are critiquing his questions uh, but it's okay, the well -defined principle. or maybe we could say the principle is how well these fit the definitions of the function so maybe you are doing this a little bit it depends on how much emphasis you put on it let's, for this one let's do somewhat okay I feel like it's ambiguous okay yep. yeah the book's better than the test <laughs> I'm sure it is. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Dario. Not, that, not, that, not that you've had a preview of it or anything. <laughs> if you a lot of information over time to confirm what is customary. Confirm what is customary or standard? Yeah. Again, it's an SJ question. This is about measuring SJ-ness. Yeah, that is a bit, oh yes, I know. This is the idea that SJs do read a ton of information until they become. Just so, for the sake of it. Oh, Wojtek talked about his father, told him that he read a, uh, every book on a particular subject. And initially Wojtek didn't believe him, but then he said, well, that might have been true in Poland, because his father's like an ESTJ. And SJs will love to read. That yeah, is, there's no way in hell I could do that. <laughs> because, like, if you look at, like, the top political books on Amazon, 
you look at like the top 20, like 18 of the top 20 will be like conservative or like historical books. Because those SJs love to read. And someone can, I, I mentioned that to Wojtek and he checked it out right, right there and then. He said, yes, man, you're right. Because initially he didn't believe me. But that's the thing, eh? thinking for yourself. Right, there we go. So what, what about this? Ah, so, so, ah, so you, you, you do it because you're looking for a particular thing, don't you? Rather than, so your mindset for looking for information is different from that. Is that correct? Would you say? Yeah, I, I can't just sit and mindlessly read. Just yeah. to just to learn about this thing, I uh, know if I don't care about it, I'm probably never going to pick up a book on that subject. Yeah, suppose the idea there so. is, is they're doing it to confirm what is needed because it's like I suppose the SJ mindset is, oh, I want to make sure I'm doing it the right way. Whereas I don't know how much of a need you have for that. I mean, you might get to a point where you say, okay, I know it well enough. I have enough information for me to make my own decisions about what's right. Well, I mean, as far as looking at, like me looking at the hypertrophic indicators, um, if new information is presented to me, I'm not going to say, well, I already know enough about it. I form my opinion. You know, I'm going to mm. read it because if, you know, an expert that I consider credible puts out information. I'm going to read it and consider it. Yep. But I mean, information about, you know, like I said before, ballet or, you know, it could be anything, marine biology. I don't care. I'm not going to. Well. And that was an interesting use there, folks. That's an example of the tandem use of TE and FI, where uh, Haley said that she listens to the evidence put forward by someone she respects. So it's like the T to the FI of respecting the person and then looking at their evidence, the TE. So those two functions working together. So that's how TE can work with FI. Right. Uh, so what do you think about this then? So, 27. Well, based on everything I said, help me out. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm misconstruing it, misinterpreting it. Yeah, you see, the thing is, it's the two question. It's like the motivation of why. Uh, to confirm. Yeah, but I don't think you're doing it. Are you doing it to confirm that it's the right thing to do? Or are you doing it for some other reason? What What is your purpose of reviewing? So, for instance, in this hypertrophy. Well, in that yeah, in that aspect, I'm doing it to confirm that this method or this theory, at least as I think can be applied, is correct. Basically, I, I want to know if it works and if this evidence further helps explain if it works, then that's basically why I'm looking at it, to help me understand why it could work. Right, okay. I I'll go for somewhat me for that because there's a little bit of an overlap. Mm -hmm. That's a fair... Because, like I said, there can be an overlap between SI and TE. Uh, I'm attracted to symbol archetypal mysterious. Eh. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't click on that option. <laughs> <laughs> what, what it's getting there. That, that's, for the, that's, that's for the NFJ, I reckon, that one. Uh, Little, okay. Did you want little me? Sorry, because you sound cut out. A yeah, bit. yeah. Okay. Little, little. All right. Until your visible cues to see how far you can go. Then okay. Well, well, this basically this is measuring uh, SP ability. I was about to do about to do Jeff's joke then. Uh, uh, SP ability. So it's like because they they they. Like ESTPs push people to see how far they can push people. So I think you just said there that you click on no. Yeah. And I, no. Think you, I think you mentioned that in a video you did. Uh, yeah, I think it was. I, oh, oh, I won't say the name. I won't say the name. We'll prejudice the. I won't say the name of the video. Uh, I'll mention that at the end. Uh, read visible cues to see how far you can. So did you click not me? On that? Do you think? Yeah. Okay, not me. Uh, number thirty.
this, see again like I think I'm confusing all of the things that pop into my head and like all the different ideas that can help work towards one goal and like if these things help explain if this one thing works like is it talking about all the ideas or that one specific focus I think that my opinion is you don't do this because you don't actually follow the tangent. Someone like me and an ENTP, I think this is measuring extroverted intuition. And there you can actually see how their thoughts, they go off track. Whereas with you, I think you stay on track and you have these possibilities. You consider them. You then put them to one side and say, no, no, I'm going to go with plan A. I'm going to go with the master plan. Those are interesting possibilities, but thank you very much, possibilities. I'll go with plan A. So you, you don't, you can maybe consider the tangents, but you don't follow them. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. Right. So, so, no. Not me? Is that the right one? Yeah. Okay. 31, yeah. I'll go for exactly me. Yep. Um, well, I mean, people I'm close to, but everyone else, no, not really. No, little, I said little. I think I put, I put that as well. I, I think I actually wrote in the book, under hosting, only hangouts. <laughs> okay. I am not his brother. Just gonna keep tossing time. Yes. <laughs> I might be reluctant to do so, but if I need to, I will. And okay, readily communicate. Personally, tell members of the group to feel unity. Um, That's the I'm key really... part to me. The key there is to feel unity. That's the key emphasis there. No, little. <laughs> little or no? Little. Actually, no. Yeah. Because, I'm, I mean, I'm putting myself in a scenario where I'm in a group, I'm doing group work, and I, honestly, I don't care. Like, if at the end of the day, I want it to be done right, I don't necessarily care about how everyone feels. So, no. Yeah, so basically that's, you're measuring e extroverted ethics, uh, sorry, extroverted feeling there. Sociolines calls it extroverted ethics, uh, where it wants to, um, everyone to be on the same page. And so that a unity of uh, feeling. Uh, right, so number 35. Just, is this just for the sake of it? It sounds like, like that. You're spending time. Yeah, this is more like like what I would might do, where reading Dario's function book and thinking about, well, is he right with that function? I might fine tune the definition of the function and argue with other, argue with other people, well, he's not got the function defined properly and then he goes, ah, but they're only models anyway. So yeah, this is this is more. What function do you think thirty-five is asking about there? Uh, I don't know. It's TI because it's it's like thinking without much of a practical purpose immediately. Based on everything you said, I would select little me. But I might be misinterpreting. Yeah, but, see, but as we said before, it, the theories can be useful. It depends on... Yeah, okay, little me, that I'll go with that because of the emphasis on... Because like I said, certain types are more interested in implementing the theory because it's useful, and other types are more interested in getting the theory correct. And thinking about the theory. Uh, of... I just care if it works. <laughs> Pardon? Like, for example, um, mechan 
metabolic stress, like the video yeah. I posted. Um, I wouldn't care about this at all if I couldn't implement it. Like if I couldn't, if I didn't think it worked towards my goal. I don't mm. necessarily care so much about defining it for the sake of defining it. Um, I want to know what it is because if I don't understand it, how, how can I implement it? <clears throat> but just for the sake of it, no. Right. So that was a that was a very good answer for being super TE, a very TE answer. So <laughs> number thirty six. Yeah, exactly me. Exactly me for number thirty six. Right. Right. So what function 37. do you think that is? What do you think? What function do you think thirty six? Uh, I would guess F five. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, Please I mean, so that's what's good about this test. It's just going through the test. It gets you better with the theory of the functions. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, number 37. Okay, the grammar of this is kind of I mean, annoying I mean, me. Let me, I can tell you something <laughs> about this. I can tell you something about this. Linda is an INTP like me, and Dario, and she objects to when Dario says random, and she says they are not random, there are connections. And then Dario said to Linda, yes, but other types see it that way. <laughs> they see NPs as random. So we, we NPs think that it's a relation there, but because other people just say that's a bit random, because well, we see the connections. And um, other types might be, yes, I see the connection too, but it's not very useful. So, yeah, do you do, you do yeah. this? As far as I see the connection too, but it's not very useful, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, in other words, how would I answer the question based on that information? Okay, and what I think this means is, um, this is basically measuring the sort of thing that I would do where uh, I would like in a conversation and I would suddenly turn the subject to something else that I think parallels it and so it so the other people might see it as tangenting but I'm sort of like going into a parallel situation although what, what I will tend to do though is I might go into a parallel situation of a subject that I'm more interested in and sometimes I'm self-indulgent because I find a connection to a subject that I'm interested in like when I talked about interest rates so there is a tendency for we NPs to me as an MP to um, I'm talking for all MPs to like digress onto subjects that they're interested in if they find a connection uh, to it so the the idea is uh, so when you're talking to people do you usually stay on point or do you go from go across topics and tangent usually stay on point and also when you're trying to solve a problem you, you like stick to the problem rather than, than thinking say of other problems no oh. I just yeah I just stay on point and I mean, you see Dario there, and you can, the use of the word random, his own preferences have come through. So what do you want me to click for this? Probably not, or a little me, probably not. Right, 38. Spur action, pull off is all simply by making your presence felt. Simply by making your presence felt? No. Yeah. That's Not basically me. like an ESTP or an ESTJ coming in and like throwing their weight around. <laughs> okay. Transform yourself by focusing inward on the specific way you foresee you will need to be. Transform yourself by focusing inward on a specific way you foresee you will need to be. Yeah, so 38 okay, was you about might need to rephrase this. So 38 was about SE. This is about NI, 39. Because it's about change and time. Okay, so I should be focusing on transforming myself by focusing inward. Well, okay. Um, it, it, I think it's like, 
uh, it's a bit. This is a bit. It's a bit. This is a bit NFJ, but it sort of means like this is how I want. This is how I see myself in future. What do I need to do internally to get my mind right in order to become this thing or person in the future? What are the sort of attitudes and things that? that so it's sort of like it, it's concentrating on change work. I believe therapists call it. So it's a focus on self improvement. I mean, do you do you, do you, have you have you ever seen that in yourself? Like, uh, I want to be at this certain thing, this certain place in future, and I see a way in myself that maybe I need to improve or change to help me get there, or a way to be like. Uh, did it say? Yeah, and that's it. A way you need to be. So this is about changing yourself, self development. I still think it's it's kind of ambiguous. Yeah, I do so, as well. But yeah, it's a very NF, it's a very yeah it's a very NFJ question. Right. Uh, so so you're happy with me clicking somewhat? Okay. No, not really, because I want to understand it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. Okay. I'll uh, I'll read out from the book. Right, I'll just, uh, and then I'll go back to it in a moment. All right, okay. I will. Uh, I'll put my light on. Oh. Oh. It's what almost eight there, eight p.m. All right, I am. I'm back. So, because there are some other questions which are similar to this, and I have read all of the NI chapter, and I have may have sent Haley one or two scans, only one or two, Dario, of the chapter to promote the book. To Haley, that's right, isn't it, Haley? Only one or two scans. Right. That is correct. Yes. So, um, so what we got here? Uh, so basically, it's this. Um, <laughs> I think it's the same question. It's transform yourself in a specific way by focusing inward on a way you foresee you'll need to be in the future. Okay. Uh, as far as what the you, right, okay. way you foresee you need to be in the future, like. For a goal, like is something yeah. you need to change about yourself to, to reach a certain goal, or like, yeah, I mean, I feel, because that's the only way. Yeah, if I come, if I realize that there's something I need to do or implement in order to reach this goal, I, I guess it's not so much like changing my inner self. It's like changing something I, I do, like something I need to do. I need to yes. you know, wake up early so I have more time to do this thing or do that thing. Um, I think it is. It's like someone like Dario. I think he would have looked at this. He would have thought, "Okay, I need to do these certain things with people. I need to get better at these certain skills of, uh, say, so I need to be better at dealing with people. So a way to be, um, because it, Dario has freely talked about learning this stuff. So I'm not talking out of school on this one." where you, you learn specific interpersonal skills, a way to be in a certain situation, a way he can see himself improving, personal change, personal development, that will help him, the way he sees himself in future. This is what I want to be in future. This is how I can see myself getting better and developing as a person. Is that a better way to put it? No. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, no, no. I'll, I'll make it. Okay. Uh, uh, what we could say is for you is that. Um, do you think that you will need to be? Yeah, it is a little bit mystical. I mean, I, I, and I've like written in the book. I've like written bits which sound. I've like sort of like written on there. Uh, you know. I mean, I, I've written things like mega nf so i do object sometimes <laughs> with dario's wording i think so yeah so we left it at somewhat me and now we're going to go yeah back. let's do that we go back to uh so because at if this comes out as anything other than the type that we think you are you'll <laughs> eat I, your hat i'll eat my hat <laughs> I'll, I'll eat because i think it's so obvious what type you are but i will eat this is the this is the hat 
this hat if it turns out <laughs> the type other than the one that you think you are. All right. That is a promise. So I've put a lot of faith in you, Dario, and your test, because I, I love this hat. I very much like this one, and I don't want to eat it. Oh, no. Right, number 40. There's actually only eight questions left. Whoa, nine questions. Right. I'm making pretty good time. Oh, very good. Okay, uh, I feel the same regular workout to be able to get a couple of While you talk about that, I will be back in a minute or two. Will that be okay? If you start to talk to the fine. audience. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> Goodness, you left me here all by myself. Fabulous. Fulfill the same regular work activity every day at a comfortable pace. Okay, so I'm going to do my best to think out loud so I'm not boring you guys to death. I would take a nice, lovely bar and insert it between every day and at. So this is focusing on fulfill the same regular work activity every day or at a comfortable pace. <sighs> Can I do for him to leave? I'm going to assume that this is stressing at a comfortable pace. So. Yeah, I'm back. So. Um, wow, that took. That didn't take long at all. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, a good thing you're back. Goodness. <laughs> so, which one, number forty, do you want me to click on? Okay, so um, like I was telling the audience, I would assume that this is stressing at a comfortable pace. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, exactly me. All right. <laughs> 41, merge and feel intimate oneness with other people. No. No. I mean, unless they're close, I'm really, really close to that person, then I can appreciate it more. But as a general rule, no. Okay, not me. Yeah, not me. Uh, 42, stick to making decisions based on impersonal methods such as points earned. I can give an example of what Dario it, means by this. It, yes, he, 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 he was, um, he gives the example that he used to lecture in computer science and he said that certain students would try to befriend him and sort of like ask for extra points because they were chummy. No. <laughs> And no, he was like, no, no. I'm marking uh -huh. you on the work. <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't jive with me. So this uh, was six minutes, such as points earned. No, I don't work based on points. So, you so not. Now, do you want? I'm do sorry? You, is, isn't that exactly me? Well, I mean, I'm agreeing with Dario in, in yeah. the sense that yeah. so someone's that trying to chum up to me. Oh, okay, yes. yeah, then. Exactly, me, yeah. Because you, you're going for the points earned instead of being subjective. Right. Right. So, number 43. I thought it was like people are trying to get, like, there's an expression, uh, like, you just earn 10 points in my book because you're trying oh, to be friendly. Right. That's, you know, ah, yeah. right. Ah, I didn't know that expression. Sorry. Okay, 43, continually examine a choice is harmonized with important beliefs. Yeah, exactly me. Right, that's FI again. 44, take a part of something to figure out the principles on which it works. Just to do it? No. <laughs> no. Am I interpreting that correctly? Yeah. Is that correct? I mean, yeah. just for the sake of it. Yeah, because it, it, Dario uses a lot of the word too. So what, what, do you, what do you want? Not me, little me. I, I might be misinterpreting this. 
No, it's literally that. It's that just. It's not really got much of a purpose. It, it's literally just taking something apart, just in order to figure out the principles on which it works. No, so it's like, I mean... it doesn't really have like. There's no practical outcome from it. It's just like gathering knowledge on principles. No, no, mate. not me. Right. Question: Mental limits completing the array of innovative achievements. It's in mostly or exactly me. What do you want to go for? Mostly or exactly? Exactly. Right. Things are not they have always been. Okay, this is mirroring that one question. It was one of the first few questions. Mm. Between how things are and the way they have always been. Again, I have to say that the wording here, you're able to point out the discrepancies, but whether you like things to be a certain way, like, you know, being able to do it and your preference is two completely different. Yeah, I think it's asking about whether you actually do it or not. Do you actually point it out? Yeah. Because yeah. SJs do. SJ is always putting it out. Example uh, in glute training, how things are in the way they have always been. I mean, as far as the method everyone has always implemented, which is squats. Yeah. Um, how things are, in other words, what research says, what research supports versus how they've always been the popular method that's not supported by research, unless I'm misinterpreting this. No, I think you're on the right track. Okay, so yeah, I guess mostly. Put mostly. Right. Right. Um. Chess. Well, I mean, I I'm thinking out. chess would emerge. Oh, go ahead. I, I checked out the definition of brainstorming, and there, there appears to be like two definitions. It's like there's like one person on their own, like tangenting, and then there's like an idea of people around a table throwing around ideas. So I think he means like the person on his own, or her own. Well, I mean, I feel like I'm able to, of course, and I, I utilize this, you know. I feel like in order to bring about as much evidence as I can, what works, I'm constantly searching for ideas. Um, not, not necessarily that I trust it, because if something comes up, I'll look into it to see, you know, if this actually is a credible bit of information that could support what works. So, I mean, I do it, but I don't necessarily trust the information. Do you think it should be somewhat? Yeah, put somewhat. That's fine. That's one. Easily getting sick physically. physically. No, I don't even have to <laughs> read the rest of the question. <laughs> All right, then. Okay. Uh, question so, okay say oh i'm sorry oh yeah i was just saying i don't have to think about some of these uh your age should i put 23 yes all right oh oh what about the number lock on 23 yeah no we don't put that uh don't need that let's click well i have a question Oh, interesting. Oh, there we go. Wow. This is what my question is based on. When we submit this, who is it that gets the, like, if I write a long, elaborate comment? Uh, I think Dario will get it. Although, if you, you uh, could just, I mean, I could just, I could send it to Dario. I, could, I can hook you up with them. Uh, okay. It might not be an instant <laughs> feedback, but, you know, he, he gets to it. Uh, your MBTI code. Oh, let's just say unknown. We don't want to prejudice things. Uh, how did you? Uh, I don't know my type code. We'll say that we do, but we, you know. <laughs> Wait a minute! No, I'm He's this stubborn, time. isn't he? Right, right. <laughs> right. Your ID? No ID. Please indicate. Oh, 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 Just um, put none or. I'll put YouTube. No, Facebook. Fair enough. 
Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, you, YouTube, I'm a YouTube person, I live in YouTube. Right. Uh, submit. I'm half expecting her. Return and fill this out. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Do I gotta eat, have I got to eat my hat? Do I have to eat my hat? Oh no! I've got to eat my hat! But, again, but he also said, please consider INTJ. Oh, come on, we've got introverted fear in home. But you're not an ISTJ. We know you're an INTJ. Oh, Dario, 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 Dario. We know you're not. Because that was those questions on SI. Like I said, they were tricky because... Yeah. But even if you now, would you consider this to be the most credible version? Like, in a, like, is this the go-to test that you would suggest? Um, you see, um, I think the Kersey test is pretty good because it because it, it, it works out your temperament first, and I think that the Kersey test would work out that you are an NT. And then it would uh, look at whether you're introverted or extroverted. And so then it would either be uh, architect for INTP or mastermind for INTJ. And I think it would pretty much tell you apart uh, quite accurately based on your answers. But if we actually look at these results, and I'll, and I'll, um, I'll save them for you. Um, but yeah, I mean, but it says here, if they don't fit well, try INTJ. Uh, right, NIT. We got, but again, the way he defined NI, where's NI? There, you see, see, when I did this, my NI score, it said unused. Like I said, he is defined NI too much in an NF way. That, that's why you didn't connect with it, in my opinion. Whereas when you've looked through when you've um of the one or two pages you've seen of ni you did connect with that process is that correct yeah um, so yeah it's just a little it it's it it's it's goodish the uh because it because it enables you to look at the but yeah online tests are um notorious for um I will uh, try to grab that for you. I'll, I'll just uh, print the screen. That I will. Uh, there we go. Right. Oh, I might as well put that. So, what do you? What, I'll, I'll put that back on. So, uh, what do you? What do you think of these results? Well. If I can have you, I mean, generally, INTJ versus ISTJ. I mean, I, I don't want to say I wish just one letter. Obviously, uh, the difference is introverted sensing versus introverted intuition. I mean, basically, that's what it is. Um, yeah, I think they're. I, I don't think it's correct, but then again, what do I know? No, I mean, I mean, I mean, you, you're obviously INTJ. It's just like I said, as we went through the questions, it's like, uh, look, look at that though. Excellent use of TE, fifty-seven point five. So you can be proud of that. <laughs> and FI, FI, excellent use of FI. That's good as well. But again, it it, what has happened here is because of the way Dario has written the NI questions. He's written them in a way that does not appeal enough to INTJs because to INTJs it sounds too NF for them because it doesn't sound like them because it makes the function sound too mystical. But yeah. I, think the, I think the way it's defined in the book is better. So if, if he had defined NI as he did in the book, then this 35 would be higher than the 40 and then you would be and then you would probably be INTJ 
It's just the way he's defined NI. Uh, the, the best way to test yourself is to read through profiles and uh, yeah, on a test, I'm like, for instance, Maria has talked to me about this. Like, when you've talked about NE, where you can think about all of these possibilities, is that a lot of times people can run into their control function. So your control function is NE, where you do think a lot about possibilities. It's just you don't, you're not going to act on them to get distracted from the main, the main plan. So I will uh, just grab that. And then I can, uh... All right, then. So... Well, so what we can do, we can, uh, we, we can let Dario up in the, is it okay if I send these results? Oh, it's good. It should be okay. The yeah. whole world is seeing the results. <laughs> if only the whole world were watching. Now, um, I will save that. So, uh, what have we got here? Uh, young compatible. These are going to be uh, the results. But I, I bet I, I think I, I like the fact that you got a high FI score. Right. Uh, right. Uh, what have we got here? No, no, no. So we will. So overall, what do you think of the of the test? And if if the test's not so great, what about the things that you've learned, or maybe new things you'll think about? Well. I've learned that it's probably not a good idea for you to leave me alone with the audience because we're going to get bored as a mofo with me. Okay. <laughs> well, y'all go. You might go back and watch this and <laughs> everything. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I mean, I thought I, I I generally enjoy discussing questions like this. So, I mean, I thought it was a uh, interesting. I thought it was very interesting. Um, I I do agree with you that looking at the questions and looking at what function it's particularly, you know, asking about helps you kind of to understand them more. So. Yep. yep. That's the thing. Uh, and there are quite a few people. I know, I know one particular INTP female and she keeps taking the test and it will say something like ENTP, or ESTP, but the reason why is, uh, as we were talking about before, is um, preference versus skill. So, for instance, she's, she's skilled in SE things because uh, her father took her out hunting and fishing when she was younger, so she got good at those activities. But those kind of activities that she does outside tend to be more towards SI than SE. So it's like comfort, like, so fishing is more SI than SE, because SE is more aggressive. Um, uh, so, so preference versus skill. So, uh, but the book is still good. The book is still cool. So uh, I think we'll, uh, <laughs> is there anything you'd like the audience to know? Well, uh, let me ask your opinion. And oh, excellent. Not necessarily today. excellent. Um, friend of mine, an INFJ friend, is dead set on the fact that he thinks I am INFJ, and I think we can both agree that that is not accurate. No. No. I mean, everyone watching, most people watching this, we could have a little bit of a poll. In fact, what I can do is I can post it, and would it be okay if I posted it in some Facebook groups? Yeah. What type do you think? Absolutely. Hayley? And it's like. <laughs> Now, I know what Wojtek would say, but I'd have to, like, bleep it out. He would go, she is INTJ as bleep. <laughs> That's what she would say. <laughs> he does actually talk like that, Wojtek. <laughs> he actually does. Right, so I don't think there's much uh, else we can do. We can do, in future, we can do more productive hangouts. Right, maybe, in fact, we could do an Enneagram one on the, ha on the weekend. With Jonathan I've right. already had a he, he's open so bye for now folks and maybe at the weekend there'll be another present in your Christmas stocking an early Christmas present and going through um, Haley's Enneagram type and uh, we'll see if she's a five or not 
Maybe she's a three. We don't know. Right. 